Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Yasmin Ibrahim. Under the patronage of the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Zayed bin Rashid Al Zayani, the Bahrain Society for the Development of Small and Medium Enterprises organized a Ramadan evening marking the Society's 10th anniversary. The Minister said that the Society's establishment reflects the extent of the association and cooperation of the public and private sectors in order to promote and develop the small and medium enterprise sector to come up with the best initiatives and achieve the desired results. He also stressed the keen desire to, of the Ministry of Industry and Trade to share the development process of small and medium enterprises to overcome difficulties and facilitate procedures to create a pioneering work environment that attracts businesses and stimulates the growth and the sustainability of enterprises. The Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism affirmed that the Small and Medium Enterprises Society has a tangible role as one of the pillars of the entrepreneurship environment in the Kingdom of Bahrain in terms of initiatives, programs and events it launches that keep pace with the changes and needs that benefit a large segment of institutions and entrepreneurs. Coinciding with the holy month of Ramadan, which contributes to attracting more visitors and tourists to Manama Market, the Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority organized the Gurgaon event in the Bab al Bahrain area within the framework of the event program organized by the Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority. The event also included a photo exhibition that included many popular and recreational activities. The CEO of the Bahrain Tourism Authority, Dr. Nasser Qaidi, called on all citizens, residents, visitors and tourists to visit these events and enjoy the activities and programs they contain for all family members, stressing that the authority has taken all the necessary preparations to achieve the aspirations of all. He noted that the authority is continuing its promotional campaign that includes the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Gulf Cooperation Council states for all events held in Bahrain during the holy month of Ramadan. UAE Vice President, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum received scholars, guests of President, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, as well as judges and Supreme Committee members of the Dubai International Holy Quran Award at the Shindaga Majlis in Dubai. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed, in the presence of His Highness Sheikh Maktoum bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Deputy Ruler of Dubai, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance, and His Highness Sheikh Mansour bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, welcomed his guests and exchanged greetings with them on the blessed occasion of the holy month of Ramadan. He also discussed with them about the noble values that the holy month inspires in people. Sheikh Mohammed affirmed that the, under the leadership of President His Highness Sheikh Khalifa, the UAE, continues to practice moderation and tolerance and promote compassion and peace among the world's nations. He then congratulated Sheikh Ibrahim bin al akhtar bin Ali al qayyim winner of the Islamic Personality Award and the top 10 winners in the 20 fifth edition of the Dubai International Holy Quran Award and wish them success in their future endeavors. Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman and Russian President Vladimir Putin gave a positive assessment of the joint work in the OPEC Plus format during a phone call. Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman also reaffirmed the kingdom's support in finding a political solution to the Russia-Ukraine crisis, according to an official Saudi press agency report. OPEC on April 12 cut its forecast for growth in world oil demand in 2022, citing the impact of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, rising inflation as crude prices soar and the resurgence of the Omicron coronavirus variant in China. The Saudi Crown Prince also discussed in a phone call with the Chinese President Xi Jinping means to enhance the strategic partnership between China and the Kingdom. The two leaders reportedly discussed ways to further the work of the Saudi-Chinese Joint Committee. The Chinese President praised Saudi Arabia's pivotal role in the region for its efforts to bring peace and stability to Yemen. 
Ratings agency Fitch revised its outlook on Saudi Arabia to positive from stable, citing the improvements in the country's sovereign balance sheet given higher oil revenues. Saudi Arabia expects to post its first budget surplus in nearly a decade this year by keeping a tight rein on its budget while revenues roll in, boosted by higher crude prices. The kingdom has increasingly relied on its 450 billion US dollar sovereign wealth fund in the PIF and other state entities to drive an ambitious spending push, leaving the government's books relatively clear while freeing it to raise debt if needed. S&P last month also raised Saudi Arabia's outlook to positive from stable. The United Arab Emirates will update its travel protocol for unvaccinated Emirati citizens as of next Tuesday, allowing those who have not received regular or booster vaccine doses to travel, given that they present a negative PCR test result. National Emergency Crisis and Disasters Management Authority also announced an update to the travel protocol for passengers arriving in the UAE, making unvaccinated individuals aged under 16 exempt from presenting a negative PCR test upon the arrival. The UAE topped the the list of countries with a population of over 1 million in addressing the COVID-19 pandemic in terms of rate of fully vaccinated individuals, according to an index released by Our World in Data. The UN envoy to Yemen called for serious engagement to uphold the war-torn country's truce, which has offered a rare respite from violence. Hans Grunberg spoke at the end of the first visit to Houthi-held Houthi capital, where he held talks with Houthi leaders. The two-month ceasefire took effect 11 days ago. Grunberg said oil tankers had begun arriving at the port of Hodeida, one of the terms of the truce intended to ease the fuel crisis in Sena and elsewhere. He added that the intense work is underway for Sena Airport's first commercial flight in six years, another feature of the pause in fighting, while talks have started on re reopening key roads in Taiz and other governorates.